My name is Ebenezer Amwako Entry, and you are so welcome to this YouTube channel. On this YouTube channel, you are going to get videos that will set you up in your work with God and also with your prayer life. On this channel, you upload videos consistently to make sure that believers are guided to pray and pray and pray. If you are new to this YouTube channel, make sure that you subscribe to the YouTube channel so that when we upload new videos, you can have access to them. And also, if you don't understand anything, kindly send us a message and we will get back to you. Also, make sure that this video you are about to watch, you will like the video, try and comment on it. And when you are blessed by the video, make sure that you share it to someone. Thank you. Lord, we ask that this holy assembly we become an excuse of divinity to bring to pass purposes that have been weaved into this season in this territory and even beyond so that your counsel will not just reign among men but will shine as the sun and lead us and keep us and preserve us thank you father in jesus precious name hallelujah praise the lord hallelujah you may be seated god bless you it's such a great honor to be here this evening i want to quickly salute the leadership of the jesus here here in unizik for affording me the privilege to be here to share with you the counsel of god I'm persuaded in my spirit that somebody will receive an encounter that will change his life. You see, when we say these things, we don't say it to psych people. Ourselves are testimonies of the efficacy of the word of God. This is what has made us who we are and is making us. And we have been given the honors to extend the same to others. As terrible as we were, if these wars had the potency of transforming us to the degree that it has, then we are persuaded that it can transform others. Tonight I'm here with my friends, the Covenant Brothers, Pastor Victor Ogbe. <laughs> You know, it's a prayer festival. And when you come for a prayer festival, it's important to come with men that have mantles of prayer. <laughs> so tonight, when I'm done sharing the word of the Lord, I will step aside for a few minutes so that Pastor Victor will bring us the rain. There are things we do by grace, but there are other things that are bequeathed few individuals as inheritances from God. The grace of prayer is an inheritance. That the man has enjoyed of the Lord and is here with us this evening, a dear brother and a kingdom partner. And of course, I'm here with, with God's vice regent in the east, <laughs> the very choice servant of God, Apostle Chidebere Amano. I can see your bias, I can see your bias because it's. Glory to God. We just concluded the world conference this morning. We had a, a vigil where the Lord blessed us so mightily with his presence. We're there with one of our uncles, Dr. Hassan Achimudu, and um, it was a wonderful time ministering alongside with him. And the Lord was such was so gracious unto us. And tonight is the last lap. We trust the Lord to be doing something mighty in our midst. Can you celebrate my friend and brother, Pastor Tosin, all the way from Munewi. And of course, your former JCCF president. <laughs> all the ministers in the house, thank you so much. God bless you. This evening, before I begin, I'd like to counsel someone. We are here with Apostle Warum of Size Messages and his books. Get them. They will change your life. 
in every dispensation the emphasis of God are different because the counsel of God is weaved into different dispensations for achieving different specific operations and mandates that culminates into the final plan and purpose of God and in every dispensation where there is a specific mandate God raises a man and puts the intelligence for establishing that mandate in that man the dealings of God upon the lives of that man gives him the capacity not just to become the portrait of the mandate that informed that specific dealing but he is granted the skill and the capacity to communicate the same because God sent his word to Jacob and it lightened upon Israel that man become the nursery to which that which the Lord wants to achieve which was a dealing in his life to become a reality for a dispensation Apostle Arame Osai by reason of divine providence is that man that the Lord has put the emphasis of the kingdom which is the burden in the heart of the father for this generation and if you want to maximize the move of God for this season what wisdom will imply you to do is to connect to the river that flows out of him I'm not saying this because I'm his son I'm saying this because by reason of divine access I have been granted the privilege to peep into the vistas of heaven and to know what God wants to do now and very few people carry that torch and that is why every time we go around to minister even though we are also preachers we come with his message because his messages are not just to educate you they carry the empowerment of the spirit to bring you into the experience of what God is doing get those books Kingdom Recalibration 1 and 2 Betting is Excellence Choice and God Word It will change your life forever We came with some of the messages We'll leave them with the media team Get them The Bible says buy the truth Sell it not Hallelujah Just lift your hands toward heaven and whisper something to the Lord.
speak in tongues for one minute. It's time to activate your antenna. I want to talk, I want to talk from high places in the spirit. I want to minister from a place of high energy level. I need people who can perceive in the spirit. You will touch it by spiritual perception. You will not touch it because you are intelligent. These matters are here. They are locked up in the heights of the heavens. Hey, we don't meet because we study the Bible. We conduct us a spirit life. What I want to do tonight is live streaming. I want to bring you the heart of the Father. And you need to be ascended to hear me. Say the Harabanas. That which is locked up and shrouded in mystery that only the Holy Ghost sustains the capacity to unveil to the heart of mortal men. A knowledge that is characteristic of the essence of God. There is no way mortality can lay hold on it unless it is revealed by the Holy Ghost. That's why we pray. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. father in jesus name in the precious name of jesus let me just build gradually i may miss a lot of things the way my soul is ascending i may miss a lot of things the zenit of our prayers and prayer enterprise is not at the level of achieving our needs our needs are not our greatest motivation of prayer. The needs of the Father is the highest motivation for prayer. There are many needs in your life that you don't need to have, to pray to have. You only need to command them to be because of the authority you have in Jesus, in the name of Jesus. If your faith is developed, most of the things you pray about you command them and they come to pass but there is never going to be a level of faith development that will not warrant for prayer in order for the eternal counsel of god to come to pass the highest motivation for prayer is not for bread and water it's not to satisfy your everyday wants the highest motivation for prayer is to bet that which is in the mind of the father that is particular for a generation men become relevant in the kingdom when their priorities 
become consistent with the priority of God. If you looked at the life of Jesus, who is the portrait for every one of us to follow, you will discover that it will be scarce to find out in scriptures any time Jesus prayed for his need. Every time Jesus lifted his voice to pray, he prayed to fulfill eternal mandates that were bodies in the heart of the Father. So it goes to reveal to us, since Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith, it goes to reveal to us that most of the time, the reason we squander prayer so much for our needs is because our faith is not developed and we don't have mastery of spiritual realities. On account of the quality of faith that Jesus had and his mastery of spiritual operations, most of the things he ever needed, he commanded them and they came to pass. There were some that he did absent-mindedly, like walking on water to meet the apostles. Men who went ahead of him, many hours because he went to pray at the third watch of the night. And the Bible said they had gone a long while and he came walking on water without prayer. At that point, his need was the need for transportation. Water was not a barrier on account of mastery of spiritual possibilities. The man walked on water. And I wondered how he walked and he was able to catch a boat that went many hours. Somebody say faith and spiritual mastery. Jesus had need to heal people around him. He didn't pray. He said, be healed. So the needs of man are supposed to be at the expense, at the mercies rather, of his faith level and understanding of spiritual possibilities. The reason we squander so much prayers for our need is because we have not grown. When we grow up, the buttons in our heart will be the things that the Father wants to bring to pass that only spiritual legislations can make happen. So prayer in its highest level is legislating the purposes of God on the earth realm. God ensured that everything we will ever need is at the, is at the mercy of our faith. So the moment our faith is developed, our needs are already met in the economy of the divine. So a man begging for bread for one year. A man begging for job for one year. A man begging for a life partner for one year. Is a revelation of a man that his faith is not developed. Or his understanding of spiritual manipulation is low. The day he comes into the fullness of that understanding. Those things that were challenges. Those things that were mysteries, he will demystify them just by his words. Such was the life that Jesus revealed to us. In fact, Jesus never asked us to pray for the sick. As difficult as he looked, he just says to lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Because the things that constitute the challenge and the frustration of humankind were paid for and the authority was handed to man so we deal with the affairs of life by spiritual authority and spiritual authority is the function of spiritual understanding so when we gather to pray we have come to a ground of legislation the motivation of prayer is not bread and water the motivation of prayer is the enactment of the will of the father every gathering that constitute the body of believers is called the church whether there are two of you or three of you and the bible made us clearly to understand that the highest the highest the zenith the meaning of the church was the enactment and the legislation of the will of God. The only two times that Jesus' teaching bothered on the church, it was
it was about legislation. Matthew 16, verse 16 to 18. Thou art Petros. Upon this Petra, I will build my ecclesia. And the gates of hell. The moment he mentioned church, the next thing he mentioned is the gate of hell. So the gathering of believers together, it has his zenith reason for legislation. So it's a pity for us to come together for six hours and we are praying for our needs. Now there is nothing wrong in praying for your needs because where you are, God accepts you that way. But there's a place for coming up here where you understand the full essence of life and your life becomes an effulgence of the fulfillment of the will of God. The gates of hell. So the church was a strategy, a divine strategy for shutting down the opposition of darkness against the fulfillment of God's will. And the second time the church gathered, he said, whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever you lose on earth is loosed in heaven. Matthew 18, verse 18 to 20. So whenever we gather like this, the first suggestion in the mind of the spiritually mature is that we have understood what is the will of the Father for this dispensation and we have come to push it to happen. This is why most of the times Bible study becomes very important. The apostle said in Acts chapter 6 verse 4, we will give ourselves continually to prayer and the ministry of the word. Because a light is not granted from the world. The prayer enterprise will become an erroneous act. Because accuracy will not be a parameter for measuring our operations. So the extent to which the prayer enterprise is accurate is the degree to which the revelation of the world is handled. What is the burden of the Father for this generation? If that's the reason you are here today, then you came for the right reason. God will deal with your needs because amongst legislators there is a quota for taking care of needs. But Jesus says, seek ye first the kingdom and all these things shall be added. So you don't waste spiritual substance. Seek first the kingdom. What's the body in the heart of God for now? That's why we are gathered. And this is why I will come down a bit to bring some perspective so that your prayer can have transgenerational implication. Men who don't understand how to, to deal with the trade of prayer, they waste utterances. The reason I'm holding this microphone today is because a woman prayed. <laughs> all the bread she asked for when she was alive, she defecated all of them. But the eternal matters that she asked for. Every time my voice echoes through the borders of different territory, it's echoing because her altar better something pain, a spiritual infection. The texture of my calling, the degree, the depth, the boundaries of my call are a function of the prayer enterprise of my mother. Those are higher matters. And I want to show you this evening things that are more important. This is not in a bid to trivialize your needs. God is mindful of it. And if you need to pray to have it, God will support it fully. But there is a place where men come to and the burden in their heart is the burden of the Father. This is why many come to that depth so much that they forget they ever need. One of the signs that you are growing is that you will not remember when last you prayed for your need. Not because your need is not there, but you don't remember. Did you read about John the Baptist? The Bible said he lived on wild honey and locust. He was pressed in camel skin. We never recorded once when the guy prayed for food. He was grown so much in the direction of his ordination. That when he came back, he only spoke kingdom. He said, who are you? He said, I'm the voice of the one crying in the wilderness. 
when did he learn the syllabus about himself the prophecy of isaiah that john was quoting was spoken 700 years before his emergence who told him after the prophet malachi israel was in darkness for 400 years there was no voice of the prophet and here comes a man out of the back sides of the desert the desert and they say who are you he said i am the voice who told you isaiah was talking about you he understood the burden and the mandate of god for the now do you know the risk of saying i am the voice is not anybody can just come and claim to be anything but the day the voice appeared the messiah must show up because the reason for the voice is an indicator that the messiah that was prophesied for ageless aeon the season of his appearance have come so if you are a voice and the messiah doesn't show up then you are a fraud how did he understand so much spiritual timing the bible said according to ordination the sons of isaac they were men that understood the times and the season after the days of isaac's children we never read from scripture that a man understood so much spiritual permutation start in a vast array of promises he will know the exact time in time when the will of god pertaining a particular operation will be born the things that the prophet spoke about they were crafted from the realms of eternity the boundless region where time has no power that is where those utterances were caught how did you understand so much spiritual permutation that you know that the things that god uttered in the spirit will come to pass in your day and time is the reason we pray to find the mind of the father to understand the strategies of heaven to know the weight and the implication for the fulfillment of those things so that in our day and time we can host those dimensions and our lives will become the embodiment of the manifestations of those things john said i am the voice if i ask you paraventure who are you do you know how many prophecies have been wired into our generation who are you it means there is an error in your prayer enterprise because the moment your prayer enterprise sustains accuracy the whispers of ordination will begin to call you the moment your prayer enterprise sustains accuracy that which was written about you in the heights of the heavens you will begin to decode it so you wake up in the morning you just know that i am a politician the corruption in anambra i will end it maybe you didn't even study political science but in the course of praying you have walked into the chambers of eternity and you saw what was written concerning you so when you came out you came out as a manifestation of the purposes of god prayer is the tool by which wisdoms in heaven can be downloaded only if you find it and that is why you come to a generation and you find three generals gathering nine million people the idea is not to have one superstar the idea is to raise an army but how many men will pay the price of alignment how many men can pray the mind of god when there is no food on their table how many men can pray the mind of god when their children have no school fees only through and that is why it's as if darkness is threatening to uproot the counsel of god that was meant for our generation we cry revival we cry revival but very few pray for revival even if it will be at their own expense full of flesh we can't even give up our pride our ambitions and we think revival we rest on our shoulders only dead men carry revival sometimes i go to the prayer chamber and i look to the heavens i say lord show mercy show mercy show mercy because every time a revival is to be born god doesn't raise prophets he doesn't raise priests he doesn't raise apostles he raises an army the priest must become an army officer the prophet must become an army officer only man that can stand in front of the heated battle and is willing to die can carry the burdens of revival revival is not a cry on the lips of babes only dead men understand that voice that was why john could leave the pleasure the authority and the influences of his father who was a high priest after the altar of Abia, and go to live in the wilderness all his life he was the only son they waited for many years to have him but suddenly 
affiliations to sentimental emotional connections didn't matter anymore do you know how many times elizabeth cried you are my only son i gave birth to you at old age you are the hope of this family how would you do this to us the guy became deaf to sentiment he was in the wilderness we don't know what it takes to bend the counsel of god let me tell you today God depends so much on your prayer because every time God walks apart from your prayer he is compelled to exercise sovereignty and when we saw the life of Jesus not too many times God walks by sovereignty because everything God can do by sovereignty he wired it into spiritual laws so that as we grow in his quest to bring us into partnership with the divine he allows us the privilege to journey into wombs of wisdom and prayer is the channel by which we enter those wombs so that in exercising and legislating his counsel by manipulating spiritual laws with what it means to be one among the divine so that amongst us there will be gods walking on earth men that can stand on earth and appear like the stars of heaven drawn by prayer entered into heaven he shone so much he was like one of the angels when he wanted to bow to worship the angel he said don't do this i'm one of your brethren the guy had lived on earth like a talent a colossus so much that when he went to heaven there was no difference between him and the angelic a god among men because he knew what prayer was these were men that were banished from civilization cast into the isle of patmos to die never did the bible write that the guy prayed for food and bread i was in the hall in the eyes of patmos i was in the spirit i was i was in the spirit it was more important for him to be in the spirit oh my god just in case there's a signal from heaven i am in the spirit i am the mast that downloads spiritual possibilities yes many days without hunger without food and hunger but i will be in the spirit and the moment an alarm came from heaven he said i heard a voice like a trumpet anything god wants to do there are men that can trap it perhaps there's corruption in the east ninja of righteousness is walking past he's walking past the borders then the guy catches him in the spirit he says, you don't pass here there is corruption in this land and if the will of god must come to pass then everything you carry must drop i was in the spirit such was the life that men like abraham had the bible said he sat at the gate of mamri and he saw three men he says Sars. Sars. how do you recognize spiritual things if you don't dwell in the spirit how do you know everybody following patterns that were established by men of other generation did you not study how men like paul lived their lives paul began it was about missionary missionary journeys but a day came when he knew that god was moving from apostolic operation to pastoral operation he began to raise churches it was no longer about missionary empowerment. It came in raised churches. The church in the house of Cleopatra. The church in this house. The church because he knew that this time the pillars, the last stand had been established. God needed wise technocrats who could build men. So he knew that even though the apostolic office is important, now the pastoral must come. It was not Jesus that better the pastoral dimension. It was Paul. How did he understand? Because everyone saw Jesus moving from one city to another. So all the apostles felt it was about traveling, moving about. Paul came. It's no longer journeying. There are disciples that need to be raised. Let's raise pastors. But now we have a generation where everybody is doing something the way it was done 70 years ago. We don't hear the whispers of heaven anymore. Because men pray for their appetites. Ah, yeah. 
a just man, Simeon. He said he was alive just to see, just to see what a purpose to live for. A man is alive just because God told him, I will give you the privilege to see what I'm doing. And when Jesus was born and brought to the temple, the Bible said he went by the spirit into the temple. So they came to a point where every step they took were ordered the law. He went by the spirit. And when he saw the child, he carried him and began to prophesy. When he finished, he said, now I can depart in peace. Those are the men that will be ranking in eternity. They don't live for self. They live for God. What are you living for? For John the Baptist, his life had to be spent in the wilderness. God depends on your prayer for many things to happen. The reason many things are not happening is not because God is not powerful or not willing. It's because the prayers of the saints have no stature. What took these three people their whole life to see? There were other men in the east. They didn't need anything. By sorcery and astrology, the moment the star of Jesus appeared, they knew. Let me tell you, because darkness violates spiritual laws, they enter into things without process. And that's why you must always be on guard. Else, darkness will go ahead of you. Hope you know the preparation of these three people to see Jesus took more than 50 years. But the day the star appeared, the wise men in the east, they saw it. And they said, this one is the king that should be born. And they followed the star. They followed the star. This was the same Jesus that some people spent their whole life just to be able to recognize. But the sorcerers saw him the first day they knew. That tells you the quality of their priesthood. It tells you the dexterity of their priesthood. The reason darkness will want to eat up this land, even though we call ourselves apostles and prophets, is because of the stature of our priesthood. Most of the things you cannot contend with, the people wielding it are not even up to your age and spiritual experience. You are born again for 15 years. The lady who is manipulating immorality in this territory, maybe five years in demonic cover. But she has more stature than you. I don't know if I can say what I want to teach. Can you receive spiritual knowledge? I don't think you have the hunger for what I want to teach. Pray in tongues for one minute. Pray in tongues for one minute. I want to say things that will show you your quota. Where you must stand in order to be relevant. Elijah said, before God, who might stand? That was his portion in the land of the living. Where are you standing? Because where you stand will determine your spiritual authority. Elijah said, before God, who might stand? That's a man who is on his guard. Adam was given the sole prerogative to keep the garden. But he left where he was standing 
And when God came, he said, Adam, where are thou? Where are thou? Where are thou? Can you keep your guard of prayer? Or when your bread is given to you, you run away. When your appetite is satisfied, you run away. God came, he said, Adam, where are thou? Where are thou? Satata. generation do you have a portion in it which of them are you man in the gates to preserve that's what will make you relevant brother brother biblical exegesis will not give you a portion in heaven you defend it what do you stand to preserve what nation of god do you respect on earth in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus just sit down sit down I think we need to step down a bit so that I'll be able to tell you what I want to tell you I'm overtaken by body if I continue like this I may not be able to open your eyes to certain things but know something as intelligent, strategic, and important as biblical exegesis is, it will not give you any portion in God. What gives you a portion in heaven and in eternity is that thing that God wants to do in a generation that you preserved. The portion of it that you preserve, that's what will make you. This is called the wisdom of the patriarchs. For Abraham, he was willing to leave his father's house, leave his kingdom in country and his kindred. He was looking for a land that has foundation, a city that had foundation that the Buddha was God. And when that city was born, it became a city. Jesus himself would say, men will come from the north, the south, the east, and the west in that kingdom to see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They own that kingdom. That's why the sons of Jacob, Jacob, their names are on all the foundation, the gates of that city. You will not see the name of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob there. That city belongs to Abraham. What God wants to do, which of it are you defending? Because of the scarcity of prayer, God had to invent an intelligence in heaven to preserve prayer because not many are willing to pray. The Bible said the prayer of the saints, Revelation 5 8. They are stored up in golden fires as others in heaven. Because God knows that this one praying now, if he stop, I may not find another. So he had to preserve it so that the next generation he wants to do something. In case no man prays, I have stored some portion of the prayer of the righteous. So he stores the prayers of the saints as others in fires in heaven. God knew me, I will not pray for my ordination. So when my mother was praying, he stored it up. So when God invaded me, there was legality. That prayer sentenced me to my ordination. That was what happened to Jacob. Because of what Abraham did, God had the right to break his Bible. He forced him into his ordination. The guy could not argue. He battled from night to daybreak, but he couldn't. God had the right because Abraham had sentenced him to walk in a particular way. His choices doesn't matter anymore. He broke his title. When prayers go up, God has the right to do anything to bring him out to the center of his will. There are higher purposes for prayer. 
everything God wants to do in this generation depends on our prayer. Everything. But very few are praying. Very few are praying the mind of God. It's a burden that every generation must carry. It's the first tutelage that must be given to a generation. That realizing the potentials of God in a generation is dependent on the prayers of the saints. And a man who does not sustain that body has no place in that generation. Did you not read about John the Baptist? The whole generation that John lived in, Jesus said in the days of John, that whole generation belongs to John the Baptist. So if you were born in that generation, if they want to find from the archive of heaven to look for you, they will go and open the name John. You are inside John. He inherited that generation because he better it. He better it. That's why Paul could call a whole church in the city. My children. My little children. Of whom I travel again in prayer until Christ be formed in you. So that whole church is the child of John, of Paul. That's how men become relevant in the kingdom. We talk revival, talk revival. Can we pray revival? 99% of our prayer is for our appetite. Help us, Holy Ghost. Help us, help us, help us. One of the greatest crises and mishap of the believer is his lack of awareness. You don't know that the earth is under attack. You don't know that the earth has never been under attack than it is now. The wars you see, they are just byproducts of what's happening in the spirit realm. The crisis, the calamities, byproducts of the things happening in the spirit realm. If God opens your eyes to see the contention over the earth realm, you will lose your peace. The crisis of the believer is lack of awareness. Every form of wisdom that is available in the demonic realm is being deployed in this generation to choke what God wants to do. Every intelligence. And I will show you some of them. Do you know why most of you come on campus as virgins and before you are in 200 level you are disflowered? Is the intelligence of spiritual energy. Warfare have migrated to spiritual dexterity and wisdom. The devil doesn't need to appear on your campus. If he's able to alter the balances of this campus, that energy flow can keep you in captivity so long as you are in this territory. Jesus went to Peter's mother-in-law. He didn't say a demon made her sick. He said fever held her sick. It's an energy. When the devil wants to take over a generation, one of the things they do is that they alter the balance of energy. The balance of energy of the earth is under contention. And the greatest way to alter the balances of the earth is by invading the earth with other forms of energy. If you study in Genesis chapter 6 from verse 1 to verse 5, the Bible said the sons of God looked upon the daughters of men who were fair and they came and went into them and raised children. And he said that's when the giants were born. Because energy came from another realm, something happened immediately. The angels that came down indulged in perversion and because of the energy level where they came from they destroyed the balance of energy of the earth in verse 5 the bible said the earth was full of violence and the imagination in the heart of a man was continually evil so it was impossible for man to think good why because beings of higher energy level invaded this territory and mingled with it so the form of perversion they brought was superior to the regulatory force of the energy here. It's just like putting ice block in hot water. After a while, the whole water will become cold. Energy. 
So what the devil is doing now is to open portals and realms into different dark dimensions and cause invasion into the earth. These are things happening that defy even our theology. Unless God shows you. Somebody is saying, how can that happen? How did the witch of Endor bring Samuel back from Hades to the earth? The devil is violating spiritual laws and protocols. Because right now, so long as the gospel is being preached, the balance of good will be maintained. The only activity the devil can do now to cause a ripple effect is to invoke beings from other realms with superior energy level. If they can mingle with it, even the potency of your gospel will be challenged. That's why you see some people in some territories. You go there, cry from morning to night, nothing happens. Energy. Energy. Perversion. We are having visitations constantly from different realms of darkness. But most of us don't know because we are not in the place of prayer. I started seeing these things as visions. I was praying in Makodi. And at a point I began to contend with the spirit of immorality. Because I was vexed. I saw the one calmness and I bound myself in a room for 21 days praying and fasting. And the first thing that happened, I saw a vision. And I saw beings like crocodiles had battings in their hands and they were fighting on every front. I saw some men fighting with them. What is this? And as I stood on that valley, a weapon entered my hand. And the wind threw me into the battlefield. And I was fighting with them. I didn't know where I got the weapon from. I didn't know what carried me into the battlefield. And I fought. After a while, one of the elders came. And he told me to carry people to safety. And I was excused. To take people to safety. And the trance left me. And I kept contemplating, what is this? On the 18th day of my fast, while I laid in the room with my eyes open, the wall opened. And a being came out of the wall. A naked woman. I laid on the floor. I tried to stand up. I couldn't. When I looked at her head, her head was the head of a man. So I knew it was a principality. That principality that caught the aid to immorality. I began to challenge Israel. So the being came out. And he walked around me and just sat on my shoulder. I tried to push this being, no way. I tried to bite her, she didn't even know. That was when I cried, Lord save me. And light came from up and she dematerialized. Even though she left for two weeks, I was struggling with lust. Because her contact with me deposited an energy that was beyond the workings of righteousness in me. I knew righteousness, but the righteousness I knew experientially was at a level a higher energy level of darkness came upon me and with my righteousness i was beginning to struggle with lust that's why you can have faith and unbelief at the same time in your soul if faith is higher than unbelief you see result if unbelief is higher than faith you see you will not see result it's energy balance it's a manipulation of darkness so if the devil wants to take over a territory those days they send immoral spirits now they open throats and portals because they be know that his time is remaining small so he's fighting with all he has they open portals in order to distort the energy balance that's why sometimes you will come for prayer and you will sleep till you go back home because the level of darkness operation at that day your hunger and your fire cannot ascend beyond it so that darkness will choke you you may come for the prayer excited but energy balance maybe a being walked through that territory that night you were not aware so you rose up to pray you thought it was prayer as usual your hunger is still there but the energy that came is superior that's why we stay in the place of prayer to generate energy to generate energy and to litter it in our territory i can come for this meeting now i see the power of god as if it's my name but if I tell the Holy Ghost to minister to people at the beginning of the service, I will struggle. But when I preach for 40 minutes, I have saturated this place with energy. All I need to do is Holy Ghost touch. And then people, the same people that came weak, that energy I released, strengthened them. 
they become sensitive in the spirit. So if you can cough, the person will receive an impartation. Why? Energy balance. It's an intelligence of the spirit realm. And the devil is exploiting it. Portals opening invasions on the earth realm. You don't know what is happening. Terrible operations. Even aliens are being released into this world now. Aliens as part of spiritual warfare. Do you know that spirits enter animals? And if they enter an animal, if a demon enters a snake, the demon will now assume the subtlety of that snake. Because through superimposition, he can, he can sustain the quality of that animal. If a demon enters a bird, the demon flies. The same way if a demon enters an alien, he can take advantage of the energy of that alien. The white man called it UFO. He doesn't know what he's talking about. They say they are unrecognized flying objects. That is called intergalactic operations. Demons taking advantages of other galaxies and bringing entities into the spirit, the world, the physical realm. You don't know that prayer is most important now than ever. I have seen them with my eyes. The very constellations have been manipulated. The moons and the stars. Manipulated. The wise men saw the star of Jesus. They knew he was a king. And they traced him to where he was. They chose to honor him. What if they came to kill him? So they will see the star of a slave. They don't care. They know that Kai, 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 this one is a prophet. This one is a prophet. And by your star, they know that you will alter the balances against darkness. So they come and give you a job. Meanwhile, God is telling you that he wants to use you as a prophet. You don't understand the implication of energy. Demonic intelligence. You don't know what wisdom can do and undo. Did you not read in the Bible, in Judges chapter 5, verse 20, that the stars fought against Sisera from their causes? So, stars too can participate in warfare on earth. Wisdom. 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 In Joshua chapter 10, verse 12, the Bible said Joshua spake in the face of all Israel. He said, let the storm stand upon the mountains of Ajalon and the moon upon Gibeon. And he said, the sun stood still and did not make haste to go down until the period of the whole day. How did he do it? Wisdom. God came to Job in Job chapter 38 from verse 31. He said, can you bind the sweet influences of Pleiades? Or can you lose the cords of Orion? Do you have the wisdom that is required to manipulate the constellations? See what the Bible said. Can thou bind the sweet influences of Pleiades? That's a constellation. Can you lose the bands of Orion? See the next verse. You know what losing the band of Orion means? It is opening the portal of that realm. Do you have the wisdom to open the portals of Orion? That was God asking Job. And why did God ask Job? He came to him. He said, who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? So everything God was speaking is built on understanding. Wisdom. Canst thou bring forth Maseroth? So a man can go forth a constellation. Yes. That was what Joshua did. And all of this constellation of influence. He said, play this as a sweet influence. And the next part. He said, can thou guide Arcturus and his sons? Who are the sons of Arcturus? The beings that live in that realm. There is a wisdom for manipulating the constellation. They are all tools of warfare. All against the earth realm. 
that the devil is exploiting. And we come to pray, we think it's about wine. We think it's about bread. You will have all the money, but if you are not careful, the next generation will bow to the devil. So we will use your money to sponsor your child to Harvard and she will come back a prostitute. So your money was used to destroy your child. You don't know why we need to pray. Prayer now has even gone beyond just trying to see the move of God happen. Even the human race, the human race is under attack. They speak of genetic engineering robotic engineering and you think it's about upgrading man do genetic engineering they tell you they want to modify food and they attach things to those food grains that you eat and those food grains make your health and immune system weak and in the next 10 years they come to you and tell you that certain diseases have no cure and the only way it can be cured is to modify your dna and then you say they're improving your health if your DNA is modified, the consciousness of God can be removed from your life. The reason you know God and fear God and obey God is because in your DNA is a coding to recognize God. If that consciousness is manipulated away, they can tell you what to think and believe. So your DNA can be modified to think love is sex. So you can come to church, they say love your neighbor and you think they are telling you have sex with your neighbor. It's a manipulation. So a point we come where the consciousness of God can be removed from a generation. So no matter what you pray is nonsense. You are preaching the Bible. You are calling love. The guy is hearing sex. That's how his DNA is wired now to think. That's his processing. We pray to frustrate darkness. We pray to frustrate the agenda of darkness. Beyond ourselves. So they put everything together. It doesn't work. They don't know why. Because of the prayer of the saints. The Bible said in 1 Thessalonians. Until him that let it. Is taken out of the way. That's the church. So the reason we pray. Is for the purpose of God. To find expression. The reason we pray. Is that they plan and the intelligence of darkness to be frustrated but how many can pray like that we pray for self and appetites have you not studied your bible the men that became great with God were the men that prayed the mind of the father the reason you are here today is because Abraham paid the price to secure salvation the reason you have the bible today to read is because somebody died somebody's family was burnt somebody was slaughtered and the bible says for such the world is not worthy that their names will be mentioned when you go to heaven some men that were never called apostle apostles and prophets you'll be shocked they'll be the most ranking men the men that god locked in caves for many years all they do is to send energy into the atrium send energy into the atrium so you come to church, you pray, people fall under the anointing. You say, I'm anointed. You are not wise. You don't know the manipulation that makes it possible for the anointing to move in your territory. Maybe the man that is making things happen has never been seen. There are men that God has told not to see the sunlight. Send thanks to prayer. And so long as they are there, the move of God can prosper in the land. I read a story about a man called Maharishi who dwelt in the caves of Kailash in India. The guy was overtaken by intercession until he went to dwell in a cave. And when he lived there, the Lord came and manipulated his DNA so he couldn't die. Genetic theory also has a spiritual dimension. When Sadhu Sundasin saw him, he was 400 years old. The story was told by Sadhu Sunda Salvaraj. Sadhu Sunda Singh went to that cave to seek the Lord. And suddenly he saw a man who stood naked. But every hair, every strand of hair on his body was as long as his height. He was like a beast. He had lived for 400 years. The man said, when we have meetings like this, 
Sometimes God allows the spirit of just men made perfect to come be part of that meeting. The reason you come for meetings sometimes and the energy level is high enough for certain things to happen is because you have visitors from heaven. The intelligence of energy. There are some angels that God allowed to come to the meeting because your faith can't handle what God wants to do. The intelligence of energy. The reason we sentence ourselves to the service of God is because we have seen that there is a higher purpose. If you don't pray, the next generation might become a generation of robots and soulless people. Men being harmonized with machines so that they think by the intelligence of machines. If you don't pray, the next generation will become a generation of machines. If you don't pray, they will come. Then your territory will become a ground of water. Hope you know that most of the clothes we are wearing now 10 years ago, even though nobody was preaching against it, you couldn't wear it and come out of the street. There's an energy now that gives you boldness. So a lady dresses naked, she feels normal. And nobody even bothered to check anymore because all of us are under the influence of that energy. You think it's normal. It's an energy. We pray so that the consciousness of God can become our operating system. So the man goes to the lab to carry out a demonic thing. The consciousness of God hits him. We pray because there is something God wants to do in our generation. And we want to be a part of it. This is why we gather most of the times. Is it important to pray for bread? Yes. But there are higher matters. And who knows the role you have been created to play? What if you are the one to front the revival? What if your role in the revival is to activate others? But you never came alive. So many will perish because of you. Jesus came. He said, Simon, Simon. Satan desires to have you to sift you like wheat but I have prayed that your faith fail not Jesus didn't pray for Peter just for his faith he said when thou art recovered strengthen thy brethren there are some men among us that must not fall because if they fall the light over others will be swallowed up energy intelligence the devil didn't go for John he didn't go for Bartholomew he went for Peter did you not read that when the grandson of Goliath came to fight, it was David he went for. And when David was rescued, the man said, you will never come to battle again lest the light of Israel be taken away. Do you know who you are? We are all Christians, but our ordinations are different. So if we won't pray, at least we will pray until we find ourselves. And when we find ourselves, the matter is sorted out. I can't preach this night. If I enter my message, I will not be able to pray. It's nine o'clock already. I want us to pray for at least 30 minutes. And we will pray brutally. You will pray outside your appetite for the first time today. You will pray to find out what God will have you do. That was the first prayer that Paul prayed. No wonder he was the greatest of them all. Lord, what will you have me do? You have always told God what you needed. Today, ask him what he needs from you. Tell somebody spiritual intelligence. Let me show you something. The prayer you are praying like this. Lord, I love you. Help me, Lord. It will take 10 years before you move forward. But if you change the intensity of that prayer, and you say, taka, tupa, kata. what we take 10 years, we take one month. It's a possibility in the spirit. And that's why the Bible says, be fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Who wants to pray brutally this night? Pete sap 
Rosalita, Bande Tome Tato, Esso Lino, Selite Tato, Ote Yanate Coma, Yato Por Ote Laito, Yata Tata Leco, 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 Leco,
it means that he is ready to judge when God stands he is ready to execute judgment tonight I want us to raise the energy to another height and from that height every priest that is generating negative energy will be caused out of our territory I come Rahata Nabasusa Hafila Hati Kakata in Rakata Tita Veluka Pahata Tusa Ambra Totika Pahati de Veluka Ayala Lila Kahida Ayla Hila 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 H
Lift up your two hands wherever you are. I see rods in the spirit. I see rods. rods. I lele kika. I lele kika. Do not be laying in the f- Who is the fat man? The kika. Rahamanda Sabrahila Konda Rabahash. Seligabundra Paraski Falandra Maradadas. Rahimata Sapali Marana Sundar Has. Shalabanda Pato Paradiga Sadash. Rakabanda Pato Suzuri Analamanda Hai. Seligabundra Parostos Kabalina Has. Rakabanda Parasila. Parasila Parasila. Seligabundra Pato Brahila Kabas. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' precious name. Precious Father, we thank you for tonight. Even as we congregate under the auspices of your Spirit. We ask that by the economy of mercy, you will grant us capacity tonight, strength and access into the realms of mysteries, the realms of insight, where men are strengthened beyond their weak and feeble limitations. Father, we ask that you grant us the kind of mercy that the children of Israel had that caused them by priesthood to legislate and to litigate against the forces that had them bound for 430 years and on the strength of that priesthood they walked through the belly of the Red Sea and they defied the powers of Leviathan walked on dry ground dead zones until they found their place in you a land that flows with milk and honey tonight Lord we ask that you will grant us access to walk in deep waters grant us the capacity to find the ancient paths where the patriarchs of old walked the places where they kept their feet and on the strength of that ground they altered even the powers of the constellation and made every force in creation to walk in their favor. Grant us such insight, such strength, such access tonight so that the weakest one among us will become a mighty nation. We ask that beyond the utterance, let there be a tangible communication of your spirit and your essence. That essence that will not deplete, even though all creation depends upon it for sustenance. Furnish us with it tonight, Lord. We give you all the glory. And we trust that that which you have in mind for this noble gathering will be achieved, even by the power of your spirit. Take all the glory, Father. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Wow, that was awesome. You may be seated. God bless you. Tonight, I would just have to, because of the little time, do a little definition of terms and then we will do a little demonstration of what we will be sharing so that men can be brought into the reality of what we talk about the beauty of the gospel is not in the intelligent nature of its presentation the beauty of the gospel is in the power that it communicates in order to make the receptors become what it talks about 
the doctrine of righteousness will be a waste if all you know about it is the intelligibility of its creation or of its design until it becomes an experience it is not a gospel the difference between a teacher a preacher or a proclaimer and a lecturer is that the things we utter they are backed up by a government from another realm making those words potent in the lives of the hearers and they become that which is uttered tonight there's not so much that may be communicated in articulate speech but the good news is that certain truths and certain realities they are transferred they are imparted as a body of spirits so even if you don't understand what will be shared the spirit will be imparted and you will discover you will be changed into another man I trust God tonight for a very tangible transformation in the lives of the hearers so that there will be a notable difference in your life from this day forward glory to God I want to appreciate God's servant a dear friend and a brother who has given us the privilege to be here even this evening to share the word of the Lord can you please celebrate Jesus for my brother Friday <laughs> and now it's, it's such a great honor he's a man that emits such a, a beautiful flavor of the Holy Spirit and if you listen to him you'll discover that we drink from the same fountain glory to God I want to salute my brother and covenant friend and brother covenant brother and friend rather Victor but who came with me this evening he's been standing in for the past two days and I'm sure you've been tremendously blessed you see there's not so much I can say tonight because he would have said virtually everything I want to say except that the word of God is fresh is fresh every time it comes down my sister sister Bumi and her dear husband Guntebi are here with us wonderful ministration glory to God and sister Vicky sister Vicky sister Vicky you see her ministry is going to typify most of the things I'll be saying tonight and by the time I'm done talking both of us will minister yes you know the last time I ministered here not this exact location the chants that were coming out of her spirit and the sounds she was creating that was what I listened I didn't listen to the message I preached I actually collected my message and her worship session it was a worship session that I played for more than six months. I kept hearing it and it kept transporting me. It kept transporting me. She's an amazing person. Can you celebrate the work of God? In her? I know. See, the songs programmed my mindset. Sometimes I just keep hearing them in my spirit. And then I, when I sing them, I try to sing them the way she sang them. But I don't have that energy and that flavor. You will, you will minister tonight again. She holds a key. Listen, there are many kinds of worship ministers. There are people who when they worship, they don't hear what they say. But what they do is that they quicken your spirit man and then the desire to come into the presence and worship is activated so they are ministers of the presence there are certain persons that beyond ministering the presence they hold keys keys to strategic places in the spirit they are activators of encounters they are activators of spiritual gifts they are activators of possibilities in the spirit so by the time you listen to them you will discover that certain dimensions of God that you have not labored for 
will begin to find expression in your life. She is such a minister that holds keys to mysteries, to dimensions, to realms of encounter. Yahweh, and we worship you for life. Those were her sounds. From everlasting to everlasting. Everlasting to everlasting. Everlasting to everlasting. This is how we praise and You will hear it in the room and the whole place is saturated. The power of God, the anointing of the Spirit. Visions open. Visions. Visions. I say, what did God do to this lady? Celebrate Jesus. She's a wonderful person. Do you know why I'm taking time to, to appreciate her so much? Many dimensions of God that opened in my life in those seasons, she activated them. You don't understand the mystery of the ministry of the psalmist. She was the one ministering to me consistently in that season. She activated dimensions in my life, seasons in my life that would have taken months of prayers months of fasting she's a blessing to the body of Christ I was telling her last night I said every meeting I go for in Makodi now she will go with me and minister You see, I would have I would have been traveling with her, but she's a lady. And many will not understand. But I said every meeting I go, I attend in Makodi. I will personally let her know ahead of time and book the appointment. This is a special minister of the gospel. A special, a special. <laughs> You will not understand what I'm telling you. Some of us, we interpret energy in the spirit. We can interpret energy. When people are ministering, most times you can tell by the spirit the height where their voices are coming from and the kind of energy they emit. There are people you listen to, the desire for sin will die in your life because of the kind of energy they traffic. The kind of spirit they traffic. And as we share about sounds tonight, you will understand better. Spirits travel on vibrations. And one of the cardinal vibrations of spirit transport is sound. That is why the Holy Spirit came to the earth realm on the wings of sounds. He said there was a sound as of a rushing mighty wind. And the moment they were able to decode the sound that was coming from the heavens of God the Holy Ghost began to alight so the vehicle of transport upon which the Holy Ghost came was a sound he said building up yourself upon your most holy faith praying in the Holy Ghost he said be not drunk with wine daring in its excess but be filled with the Holy Spirit that means if you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit there are sounds that you activate and the more those sounds saturate you the more the Holy Spirit saturates you because spirit they travel on sound energy sound is a mystery it's a mystery not many know it that's why Jesus said every idle word you speak you will account for it some of the things you utter they are the things that energize demons to walk in your life and in your word most of the things you say carelessly they are the things that have kept you in bondage till now because those sounds they are conveyors of spirits celebrate God's servant Samson Otono (laughs) 
You know, Samson Otsolo is my very good friend. He's my brother. That man loves the kingdom. He loves the Lord. He has been given a special ministry to advance the strategic operation of God in a dispensation. You see, there are many people that have been given ministries, but the job of others is to ensure that the ministries get to the ends of the earth. Everything Jesus was doing would have ended in Nazareth. But there were people that were sponsoring it. And even after he left, they sponsored it. Those people are too important. You can't over, over you can't overemphasize the quality of what they do in the body. And somehow, my friend happens to be one of the few that the Lord has chosen for this dispensation to advance the frontiers of the kingdom. Can you celebrate his service in the house of God? I'm surprised to see my guys from the medical medical school Abba Benedict <laughs> can you imagine how did you guys come here <laughs> can you imagine tell him I was also here how did you get here see Dr. Comfort right? wow glory to God oh my God just lift your hands toward heaven we have 30 minutes to share the word of God Glory to God. You reign on high. Adonai. 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 You reign on high. We will rise in your face. this title but honestly it's not a concept for babes there are certain teachings that are meant for people who are actively involved in spirit business because the economy of the operation do not lend themselves to babes when we begin to talk about matters of courts young believers may not understand when we begin to talk about things that have to do with sound babes in Christ may not understand and then when you talk about power most people don't even know what it means most times we think it's about people falling down in meetings we don't really know what power is meant for they are matters of depth in the kingdom they are businesses for people that have journeyed with God to a level we have commitment commitment of life devotion unto God have become the centerpiece of their lives people that God can make bold to commit kingdom responsibilities to because at this time they are trading by the economy of mysteries it's not a topic that you can handle in a gathering of babes I'll just try to explain the peripheries at least it will help you become more conscious cautious and careful because of necessity these are part and parcel of your life in your everyday operation what are sounds if I begin to define it in terms of physics that will be the lowest level of what it is but as we began already let me just begin by telling you that sounds are the conveyors of spirits 
the carriers of spirits the communicators of spirits and you need to understand that this realm is not a realm of spirits this is the realm of man but man is not designed to operate and live for himself man was designed to traffic the dimensions of spirit beings so that his life can become a summation of the desires of spirits the needs of spirits and the possibilities of spirits you know when John went to heaven he saw a lot of things in fact at a point he recorded that he saw a strong angel who was proclaiming with a loud voice he said who is worthy to open the book and to lose the seas thereof no man was found worthy he was reading the charter of heaven as it as touching the purposes of men that were living in the earth realm and unfortunately the extent to which that angel had access to what the degree of judgment he had no access into the portals of salvation the possibilities in christ that provides for our salvation was not yet disclosed to that angel for John to have understanding of what God wanted to do as touching the destiny, the eternal purpose of man, he needed to go higher in the spirit and receive counsels from people or from beings that are operating at higher levels. And that was when he met one of the elders. And the elders said unto him, Weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, had prevailed. If John had returned from heaven at that time, the message John would have bring to the, brought to the earth was that man is doomed. Because from everything the angel said, salvation was not captured. The angel only gave a narrative of what happened from when man was created and up to the point when man was condemned. But there were people in heaven that had higher insight and secret because of their degree of proximity with God. And it is those same personalities that define the reason and the essence for creation. You need to understand that the level of the operation in the heavens is beyond the operation of any angelic beings they are called the 20 and 4 elders they are the only ones recorded in scriptures to sit on thrones around the throne of god so on the strength of proximity and stature in heaven everything they say is from the deepest level of mysteries and what did they say they said all things were created for thy pleasure that was the summary of creation it didn't need to be brought in a very bogus statement the summary of your existence is that you were created for his pleasure these were the beings that explained the very reason why God created us so you are not created for yourself you were created for his pleasure and these beings that are custodians of secrets that brought us this revelation made us or indicted our existence if you are created for his pleasure it means you have no existence unless your life begins to give pleasure to him and the only way you can give pleasure to him is to be able to host his dimensions and to communicate it to your world so that he dominates your world and one of the ways by which his essence can be captured and transmitted is by sound so that lets you know the degree of importance of the kinds of sounds and vibrations that come out of you because every time god whose pleasure and desire is to dominate to colonize to subdue and to conquer the earth wants to have that reality that desire of him find expression it will only flow through the gateway of sound so sound is the only economy in heaven that makes it possible for the desire of God to find expression because first of all sound transmit God so what bring God into your world is sound there will be no God in your life except you understand the kinds of sound that can traffic his dimension did you remember when you gave your heart to Christ the Bible said if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus because if you confess you host it and on the strength of that communication Jesus becomes a part of your life because his realities and his dimension are transmitted by sounds most of us 
everything we say are negative you know i'm trying to be basic because of the kind of audience i'm seeing for those of you who are very spiritual sorry <laughs> you know the greatest strength of the link is at the weakest spot so we need to carry everybody along most of you you are manipulated by demons because the kind of sound you release they trap their possibilities nothing is working for me I am sick I am dying oh. I will die oh. I don't die you don't know that you are trafficking spirits and their possibilities into your life and into your world most children cannot prosper today because this kind of sound codings that they have been coded with by their parents are conveyors of costs see your big head good for nothing wasted child baboon and then when the child grow the parent begin to hope for something good to come out of the child you have encoded that child with a negative energy conveyors i don't know why nothing is working for me i don't know why i can't prosper conveyors of spirits he said as he spake unto me the spirit entered into me as he spake you know most times we come from meeting and we say god bless you the, the people don't understand what we are doing you see the word blessing means to cause to prosper to make the possibility of prosperity to work for you so when we say god bless you we are not just using church cliche we know we are communicating a spirit that will make your life to begin to prosper even though all the circumstances around you are contrary and when you grow in god one thing you begin to do consciously is to speak words that carry the life the essence and the energy of god this is not positive theology this is understanding of how the realms operate my house is constantly saturated with angelic sounds angelic i can create the atmosphere in my room without praying i know the sound that can transmit the kind of dimensions and possibilities i want to see when you talk negative you can't live around me i don't know how to talk it i can't hear it jesus said take no thought say because when you say you have created a possibility for the spirit from whence that inspiration was born to be trafficked in your direction i don't talk negative i tell myself i am a blessing to this world i don't care what you think i am a king i say if i come there things must work in my favor i don't know how to struggle i don't know how it doesn't matter he said there will be no water in the valley there is no water it is obvious there is no water he said but it shall be filled he said although the fig tree might not blossom the labor of the holy might fail there will be no head in the storm but i will say the lord is my helper he will cause my feet to walk in my high places he will make my feet to be like hind feet that's a man of understanding because he knows that his utterances are conveyors of spirits it's a business of spirits <laughs> some of you think it's by laying on of hands most of the hands that are laid on you you diffuse them before you reach your house you leave a meeting where prophecies were uttered from the podium that you will prosper you will go forward the moment you go out of the meeting you tell your brother oh boy nothing they walk on the man of god plants you are brute most of you are brutes of blessings nothing they walk on oh boy this exam i go fail and go i never read you what about the possibilities of favor what about the economy of mercy what about the hand of god what about the anointing of the spirit everything that work in your favor you don't know them he said that the communication of your faith will become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing that is in you it's only the bad things you know and those are the ones you talk 
So you give demons license over your life. And that is why you can never be delivered. Because every time they break the chain, you circle yourself with seven more chains. Sounds, they are conveyors of spirits. It's a mystery that we may not fully understand. But the scriptures affirm it. The scriptures affirm it. And the Bible said in Romans chapter 15 verse 4. He said the things that were written for time. They were written for our learning. So that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 11. He said the things that were written. They were written for our example. Unto whom the end of the age is come. The context of that scripture speaks about judgment. But as it is for judgment, so it is for blessings. The kind of spirit that works for you, they are contained and trafficked in sound. Why do you think when we come to minister, the atmosphere is charged? But if you want the people to be healed, you must declare healing in their direction. Because the spirit that makes for healing we travel in the direction of that utterance. If you don't alter it, they may go back. Even though the power was available, they will go back. See, the Bible said in Luke 5 17, it said Jesus was ministering and the power of God was there to heal. So the energy may be there, but you direct it with your words. That's why you may stand worshiping God, you are lost in the spirit. But when we say, Lord, touch you see people begin to fall they were in the spirit but the energy of the spirit was not directed it's the mystery of sound spirit the trouble in sound god knows this and that is what god applies i was teaching in lafayette three weeks ago i told them there are three cardinal things that govern the operation of the realm the first is the office of the Christ the Christ is first of all the conveyor of the Godhead so it is in Jesus that the fullness of the Godhead dwells so when we speak about the Christ we are making reference to God and everything he stands for and we are also talking about the administration of the purposes of God because that throne regulates every other thing our callings are regulated by that throne in Isaiah chapter 53 verse 8 it says who shall declare his generation so your calling as an apostle is because who shall declare his generation your calling as a music minister is because who shall declare his generation the second thing are the mysteries of the kingdom which sound is one of them the third are the principles of the kingdom God himself lives by this principle if you study the book of Genesis chapter 1 Moses was the one giving us an oversight of everything that was happening if not because Moses narrated it you will never know there was darkness because you will never hear God call darkness the Bible said the earth was full of darkness chaos and the spirit of God was moving on the face of the deep he was brooding and contemplating what he wanted to do he never spoke when he concluded what he wanted the bible said god speak he said let there be light if you were the one you would have called darkness one thousand times before you caught light because you don't have understanding god never mentioned the darkness let there be light and he said the light was he knows that his essence is transferred by sound. Most of us, if we take an assessment of our words now, we have already condemned our lives. That is why we preach the gospel so that you will know the things that are to your advantage. Even when you fall into sin, the cure is not keep talking about the sin. The cure is to begin to find repentance and talk about the provisions that you have in righteousness. That's how God operates. It's a mystery in the kingdom. I'm taking it gradually so that even the least among us we know how to apply it. Because it is the application that makes the difference. It is not the knowledge. God is not committed to what you know. 
is committed to what you do with what you know. He said, I am the Lord that confirmed the words of my servant and performed the counsel of my messengers. You apply it in your life. Things may not seem to be working. You keep talking it. You keep saying it. Because every time you speak, you give expression to the energy and the life and the essence of spirits. And you don't need to be a big man of God. It is a principle for operation in Israel. It's a principle. Sound transmits spirits. Maybe somebody wants to say, I am blessed. I think somebody wants to say, I'm blessed. Maybe what you've never told yourself before, you can tell yourself in the next one minute. Come on. You know, most times, most times, some persons don't even know how to tell themselves good things. That's why most people are easily deceived. Because they don't tell themselves they are beautiful. So one foolish guy comes up and says, Hey, baby, you are beautiful. And the lady loses her virginity. She has never really appreciated the fact that she's beautiful. So when somebody tells her she's surprised, she's shaking. Oh my God, thank you very much. Are you just being aware? <laughs> Say, man, you look good. And the guy loses his comportment. You don't know how to tell yourself good things. That's why he marvels you when somebody tells you. Come on, tell yourself something for one minute. You will be shocked that some people have not known what to tell themselves till now. Hey, dear Holy Spirit, help you to help us, help us, help us. Sounds are also transmitters of spirit possibilities. Sounds are transmitters of spirit based possibilities. God may have a great desire for you, it won't come to pass. I will show you two major things that sound transmit. Two major things. In Numbers chapter 6, from verse 23. Look at it. Maybe you should look at the scriptures. It will help. It will help you better. It will help you better. Look at Numbers chapter 6. Very quickly, verse 23. See what the Bible says. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron, unto his sons, saying on this wise. Ye shall bless the children of Israel Saying unto them Listen God wanted to bless Israel It was his desire To bless them But there was no way That blessing Was going to leave the realm of God To the realm of man He had concluded in his heart To bless them Why are they not just blessed You say you want to bless them Then they are blessed but blessing is just not, it's not just a feeling It's not just a knowing It's a tangible energy in the spirit And it must be communicated It must be imparted And it must be received Because blessings Makes for possibilities In your favor And the reason is because It is an energy That is why if you are blessed Even if a demon wants to resist you He can't Because the demon That energy opposes his own energy. When Balaam came to curse the children of Israel, what did he say? He said, they are blessed. He said, how can you curse that with God are blessed? It's an energy. The energy of a curse can't work against that energy. That energy is superior. How can you curse them? And he concluded, he said, God, their God is in their midst. That means that energy called a blessing is also a spirit based reality because of the blessing God was in their midst God wanted to bless Israel so that be easy, be blessed he said tell them these words tell them because if those sound vibrations are not released 
those possibilities will not be transferred. He said, the Lord make his face to shine upon you. Why don't the face not shine? It's a mystery. What you say will determine what you will become. It doesn't just inform your conviction. It is an energy that makes you to become. The empowerment that is in the blessing is communicated by the sound that interprets it. Isaac was blessing Esau in the stead of Jacob. He said, I bless you with corn and with wine. He had no corn, he had no wine. But he spoke the words. Those words have the capacity to make everything that can make wine and corn in the heart of a man to come to him. These guys were masters of these things. They knew it like they knew their names. So they don't just talk. They don't talk. These men, they talk as custodians of the oracles of God. That is why I say when a man speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. They are energy. They are spirits. He said that the face of God may shine upon you. That the contenance of God may be lifted above you. And he said something. When he finished the whole blessing, he said, Please the name of the Lord upon their children. With words, they could place the seal of God on a man. With words. Jacob stood up and said, Reuben, according to your ordination, you are supposed to be a symbol of strength and wisdom. He said, but today, because you are as unstable as water, you will not prosper. It didn't matter how he was designed. You see, some of you are intelligent and then you think it's about intelligence. So you pride yourself in your intelligence. And then when you finish getting all the certificates, everywhere you go looking for job, you just receive your application and throw it in the trash can. Some of you are beautiful. You think it's about beauty. I went to preach somewhere. I saw a 38 year old lady. This lady was like an Indian. What? How possible? How? I, I saw the lady. I liked her. How can a lady as beautiful as this not be married? Maybe when she was 22, she thought it was about beauty. So she spent all her time on the makeups. I heard there is one now they call. How do they call it? Is it comma? Or I? Bond. Is it bond? I mean, how do they call it? <laughs> bond. So they will bond. They will put the bond so that the foundation can be built on their face. You know, these things are built nowadays. Those days, ladies raw powder. Now they build powder. <laughs> because the layer, the layer of the powder will be as thick as one cm. So they will draw, they will draw a fresh eyelash. The, the face is casted like cake. 38 years. No man has said hello. How? Not even the ones that don't have the fear of God. <laughs> At least all these guys that are looking for ladies everywhere. At least one should have seen her. Nobody have approached her. It's a mystery. It's a mystery. It's an energy. It's an energy. Did you not see Jesus came to Peter's mother, mother in law? And the Bible said he rebuked the fever. It was not a spirit that held her bound, it was an energy of a spirit. The same way, a spirit of course, if he imparts his energy on you, you will go with the course. So when we bless, we transmit the energy of God. We transmit it. Sounds are too important. You don't play with them. You don't talk because you feel like saying it. You don't talk like that. Every idle word you speak, you will account for it because the immortals, they know what you are doing. You may not be aware. Ignorance is not an excuse. He's saying the days of ignorance God overlooks, but now, but now he commands. He doesn't advise, he commands all men 
to repent and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Bless them. Bless them. Bless them. These are possibilities that are in sound. Blessings are trafficked by utterances. Spirit-based realities are communicated by utterances. It's not necessarily when you fall. If you say you are blessed, you are blessed. You are blessed. He's on the part of his life. Until he came to a point when he broke the yoke of his shoulder. What the father spoke was actually a yoke. He said, when you are tired of that yoke, you may break it. A curse that was released was a yoke. So that thing held him down all his life. He will struggle, he can't. Meanwhile, what went in his direction were words. Sounds. They are not things you play with. Sounds are conveyors of judgment. When God wants to judge you, he won't slap you. You know, most of the time, the reason we use our natural tools is because of our level of weakness. You are weak. That's why you need to slap somebody to make a statement. Kick somebody to make a statement. Spirits don't operate like that. They are superior in strength. If God wants to judge you, He will just pick the word. You are judged. And that is it. And then I asked to Peter. He said, why have you allowed Satan to enter into your heart? The man dropped down and died. The wife came. Lied again. He said, ah. See the feet of them that carried your husband to bury there at the door. Instantly the woman went down and died. It's a mystery. It's communicated by sound. You don't know what words are. Everything fighting your life. The only way you can judge it is by your words. That is why you must guard your heart so that it is preserved as a pure fountain of God. He said, cut your heart with all diligence. Out of it are the issues of life. In Proverbs 4 verse 23. But how do those issues of life proceed from your heart? It's by your words. Most Christians talk anyhow they want. The moment they think it, they talk it. They think it, they talk it. And they don't know why their life has cut out. They can't go in one direction. They can never go in one direction. Jesus stood. And there was a sound from heaven. And the people say, ah, he turned that it. Turned that. That's where they are hearing from. You know, most of you, you hear from a lower energy level. That's why you don't know the implication of the things you say. Most of the things you say, you think you are just making, trying to make an articulate expression. You don't know that beyond what you are saying, there is something packing it that can cause havoc to your world. When Jesus was deciphering the sound, he said, now is the judgment of this world. So the judgment against Lucifer came as a packet of sound. Now is the prince of the cosmos cast out. And if I be lifted up, I will draw men to myself. Sound, they are deeper. Sound are activators of seasons and dispensations our sister picked the scripture from Acts of the Apostles chapter 4 verse 1 he said when the day of Pentecost was fully come the day had no significance except as there was sound from heaven when the day came what activated the dispensation of the Holy Spirit was a sound when the day came there was a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty way. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16. He said, The Son of Man will return with the blast of the voice of the archangel. So the end of the age, which is another strategic dispensation, will be activated by another kind of sound. When God wants to bring you into new dispensations of his operation in your life, if you are discerning, you will discover you begin to hear different kinds of sound. Some of the music you love, you won't like them again. You begin to desire fresh kinds of sound. Because those sounds are transport mediums 
that we activate those portals for you to enter those dispensations. That's why most people that expose themselves to demonic sound, they never grow in God. You ask them, they say, is it the sin? No, it's not the sin. But you will be stunted all your life. You will never move forward. Because you don't know the damage that they cause to you. Apart from the fact that they traffic demons into your life, traffic energies from the demonic realm into your life, your heavens will be locked. Because when it opens, you will not be aware. Did you not know the Bible said, those who are in the bad places of the desert, he said they will not see good when it comes. They are activator. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm upon the holy mountain for the day of the Lord coming. That's why you see every man who goes far and does deep business with God is a man of sounds. They don't joke with it. They are men of sounds. They are men of sound because breaking news from heaven they come as sounds. They are men of sounds. Either you see them with strange kinds of music. Some are morning to night they are singing hymns. Morning to night. Some are singing praise songs. They must tell one way or the other. Sound will be part of their constitution. It's a mystery. And you must learn it so that you make the most out of it. Sound. Your seasons will only be activated by sounds. Your battles will be judged by sounds. Your blessings will come by sounds. It's a mystery. How it happens, we don't know. But we know that it is so. The greatest, one of the greatest and most amazing judgment the world have ever seen was the judgment of Jericho. He said, gather seven priests. And let those seven priests have seven horns. Meanwhile, God told Joshua, He said, behold, I have given unto you Jericho, its kings, its mighty men. God has given it to him. How will he get it? It's by taking advantage of the technology of sound. Go around it seven days. The first six days, blow the trumpet once. On the seventh day, blow the trumpet seven times. The wall sank. How was that possible? You will think it's only the wall that sank. Something has happened. Everybody inside the wall of Jericho was weakened. The Bible said every man went. And the person he saw, he plundered him. So even babes who were not trained in the art of war, they were killing people that day. Because the sound immobilized the enemy. It immobilized them. There are many altars fighting you. What you need is the right sound. It will immobilize the altar. It will immobilize the priest. And then you will come only to pick the spoils. It's a mystery. But most times we don't know the things that are to our advantage. So the greatest enemy of your life is yourself. The greatest weakness of your life is your ignorance. Because you don't know the things that are to your advantage. Most of us pursue men of God, we think it's about the oil. Most of these men, they are not big in themselves. It is the things they know and practice. You come to meet a man of God, it's the same God bless you that you will never tell yourself that he will tell you. The same God bless you, you will never tell yourself. That's what the man tells you. He has, he has developed his soul in eternal life until he believes in the efficacy of that word. You are sick. You come to him and say, Be healed. The same be healed, you will never tell yourself. Meanwhile, every one of us have the same Holy Spirit. Every one of us have the same faith. Every one of us have the same angelic operation. But the difference is that most of us are not developed. And the only way you develop your faith is to engage it. Sound are creative. Sounds are creative. Is there anything you want to see happen in your life? Begin to talk it. You will be shocked. You will be shocked. I learned this one from the mightiest of men. 
Even like Pastor Chris, then he has talking sessions. He will sit down with boxers and singlet and say, I'm anointed of the Holy Spirit. I heal the sick. I raise the dead. I command bones and they are mended. I'm a king. I'm a priest. He keeps talking. They are called talking sessions. When you talk, what you do is that you educate your mind differently. The reason you believe what you believe today is because you have heard it over time. You may be beautiful, but if they tell you you are ugly, you are ugly. After a long time, you will lose your confidence. And you may be very ugly, but because they keep telling you you are beautiful. Have you seen some very ugly ladies do some things? The confidence they have. You see a lady as ugly as you can imagine. And then when she's comforting herself and doing her thing, it's as if the world is all about her. She doesn't care what you think. She has built confidence in her spirit. She has built confidence. Your mind is designed to process information. That's what your mind does. Your mind is designed to process information. Even if God begins to do something in your life, you will need to convince yourself that this thing is a dimension. If not, you'll be telling yourself, this thing will work so this thing will work. Those of you who are preachers, you know now. You know that the power of God is there. But you want to pray for the sick. Your mind still begins to troubleshoot. Are you sure this person will be healed? Oh God, I received this thing from the Lord. I know. Why are you now trying to troubleshoot when I'm going for action? The reason you are troubleshooting at that time is because you have not convinced yourself in the closet enough. You need to educate your mind. If not, the world will educate you. They have told you too many things and you have believed it. The only way you will unlearn is to tell yourself what God says about you. I stood in a meeting. The anointing became strong and my convictions began to speak. I didn't know what I was saying. But when I heard the thing, I was roaring like a lion. I said, I am a revivalist. I am an apostle. I have touched the powers of the age to come. I walk in the corridors of the immortals. I, it was coming. That is my conviction. I don't need anybody to persuade me. It took many years before many people began to call me apostle. Apostle. Now, Apostle Arumel will see me. The boy will say, My apostle. Robert. I knew I was before I met him. I didn't need conviction. But as a mark of humility, I was waiting for the day of ordination. But I knew. You see people every day asking you, say, Sir, what, what, what does God want me to do? What is my calling? And then you ask them, God has been dealing with them about souls. God has been dealing with them about praying for the sick. They know what God wa wants them to do. But they want to hear it from you again so that they will feel happy or confident. They just want to be happy so that they will say, Kai, that man of God to say, I'm a seer. Meanwhile, three prophets have told the person already, but he wants to hear it again. Why not lock the door and tell yourself, I'm a prophet? The nations will hear me, the nations will bow. I will challenge Satan, I will fight iniquity. My generation must submit to me. What if for a prophet who doesn't believe in you? Sir? Some of those things they tell you, they just want to I beg, leave me alone. Leave me. <laughs> Sounds, they are creators. God came, the only way he recreated the world was by words. The first time he created the world was by sound. He said, where were you when the sons of the morning sang into the foundations of the world? So he created the world by sound, he recreated the world by sound, and he will create the new Jerusalem by sound. Anything you want to see in your life, the power is on your tongue. That's why he said death and life. You don't tell yourself you will not see it. How many times will you see preachers tell you what you want to hear? How many times will you meet them? There are over 100 people dropping. If I go on Facebook now, you'll see messages. 70% of them is to tell them about what God wants them to do. I don't have their time. And it's not just about me. Imagine people who have 10 million followers. You think he has your time? The guy was walking from Monday to night. He has preached in 12 meetings in, one, in 7 days. He is looking for where he will put his head and sleep. And then you come and say, sir, I had a dream yesterday. He's not hearing you. If you ask him, what did I say? You'll be shocked that he didn't hear you. 
He is overwhelmed with burdens. What is troubling his heart is the nations. The nations. You who have been saved, you will go and develop you. Sometimes when you ask a man of God, you tell a man of God something. Try to find out in all humility. If what you said, he, don't, he didn't hear you. You want to create a life for yourself. Begin to proclaim it. He confirmed the words of his servant. He performed the counsel of his messengers. That's how God operates. Most of us have never spoken to ourselves. The only thing we remember are the insults and the curses that were laid in on our lives. We can even remember the curses that they levied on us when we were 10 years old because we heard it over and over. It has formed our mindsets. The reason you see most children, they are not confident. You bring them before people and they are fidgeting. Say, take the microphone and talk. They begin to cry. There's no confidence built in their spirit. Words can destroy and they can create. That's why you begin to speak consciously into your life. It's a mystery. I began by telling you that they traffic spirits. They also traffic spirit-based possibility. It's not psyching yourself. It is saying what God says because in it is the power of God. The Bible said the gospel is the power of God. How is the gospel preached? When you meet somebody, do you think the gospel to the person? You utter it. For that power to be trafficked, you utter. Sounds are creative objects. They are creative strategies in the spirit. And only men that takes advantage of them can utilize them. And lastly, with the possibility of sound, they are vehicles of transport. Sounds are vehicles of transport. You want to go to high places in the spirit, the shortcut is, is, is by sound. There's a place for prayer. I will talk to you about priesthood for three minutes before I stop. But brother, it's not all the time we need to pray. I had a busy day until 5.30 today before I came here. I needed my soul to be ventilated. If I want to speak in tongue, I will need to speak in tongue for at least two hours before I can preach in a meeting. For my tongue to be anointed. For my soul to jack up to the realm of inspiration. I've been talking to you without people. I talk from inspiration. Even if I plan a message, I can't follow it. For my soul to be jacked up, I need to speak in tongue for at least two hours before a meeting. If I don't, I will struggle under a closer. Because my soul needs to experientially sit with Christ in heavenly places. I have 15 minutes to call for this meeting. What will I do? I went and activated sound. 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 As the song was playing, the anointing began to flow from my head. And then I told him, well, I said, Kai, it don't open. I quickly carried something. I began to write. I began to write. The whole message downloaded in five minutes. It's a mystery of sound. It's a mystery. And the beauty of operating by inspiration is that it downloads into your spirit before you can teach it. So you have first-hand experience of the message. If I'm talking, if I come for a meeting, I know when the power of God will begin to move. Because as the, the way the message came, it was growing in my soul. When it exploded and I couldn't bear it anymore, if I'm talking in the auditorium, that's how it will be growing. If you read that point where it exploded in my heart, it will explode in the beauty. I am just recoiling what has already happened in the spirit. It's my sound. Never allow anything negative influence your life. Jesus said, take no thoughts, say. Take no thoughts, say. Take no thoughts, say. Salavandash. Corabandra Valiscos. Mecronda Fratiga Salavanda. Salavanda Grigos Camara Diastis. Sabalabranda Duriask. Paradis. Rapidus. Rapapandra Paros. Adonai. Adonai.
to cause peaceful. Peaceful is only possible by sound. You may not understand the significance of peaceful. This kingdom, this kingdom is meant for only one set of people. They are called priests. And those priests are expected to reign as kings. Listen, the kingdom is not meant for disciples. The kingdom is not meant for servants. The kingdom is not meant for friends. The kingdom is not meant for sons. The kingdom is meant for priests and kings. Everything Jesus does for us brings us to a level of sonship. That's the highest level the finished works of Jesus can take you to become a son. A son is entitled to inheritance. The Bible said the heir, the heir, that's the son. But it is possible for the son that owns everything in the kingdom to be a babe. And the Bible said if the son is a babe, it's not different from a servant. And servants have no inheritance. The only way you can walk in this kingdom is to be a priest. The Bible said he has made us a choosing generation, a royal priesthood. The word royal is the word kingship. That means you rule in this kingdom by authority. Where the word of the king is, there is power. Who can say unto him what to start? But for you to exercise authority, for you to have experience of everything Jesus has paid for, is not to be a son, it's to be a priest. Only priests have experience of the kingdom. You don't know why you are still struggling with sin. There is no doubt you are a son, or you are struggling with sin because you are not a priest. The moment this truth begins to find expression in your life, sin will collapse. You don't know why you are struggling with attacks. You are not struggling with attacks because you are a son. You are struggling with attack because you are not a priest. The moment, the moment this truth begins to rise, the experience of the possibilities of the kingdom begins to find expression. You want to touch God tangibly, it's my priesthood. The priesthood is like the katana. You will travel from the gate where you see the finished works of Jesus. It takes you to the altar of sacrifice where your flesh dies. It takes you to the lava where you experience the government and the cleansing power of the Holy Spirit. It takes you to the inner court where you see the altar of children, where the word of God begins to strengthen your spirit. It takes you to the menorah where you see the seven lampstand that light things and illuminates your spirit. It takes you to the altar of incense where in Intercession breaks out of you, but until you leave the altar of incense, you can't enter the holy of holy. The holy of holy is the place of experience. Many don't have experience because they stop at the gate. They receive Jesus and everything he did for them, but they never travel in the gates of his truth. So they never have experience. You talk about power, they have never experienced it. You talk about holiness, they have never experienced it. You talk about wisdom, they have never experienced it. Prosperity, they have never experienced it. That is why for them, the kingdom is a set of rules. That rules that they practice and they come for you. That's what the Israelites suffered. They thought it was a rule, but God was talking about relationship. He was talking about experience. He was talking about oneness. He said in Exodus 19 verse 4, He said, remember how I carried you on my wings unto myself. Unto myself. Experience is born by priesthood. And there's only one way to legislate the economy of priesthood by prayer. And prayer is possible by sound. So sound carries you to the presence. Sound carries you to the present. And until you come to the present, you can't fight the darkness in your family. You can wake up in the night and draw the altars that will not move because you have not entered the presence. You can judge and legislate with words that will not move. You have not entered the presence. The reason most of us are walking like dead men is because there is no priesthood. And priesthood is possible by the right kind of sound. It's called the sound of prayer. In your name, Adonai, you reign. Adonai, Adonai, you reign. Adonai, Adonai. 
before I release the power of God, before I release the power of God, I want to open the gate of encounters for most of you, so that the spirit realm will become accessible. The gate of encounters. Most of you have heard about visions. Some of you will have your first visions tonight. They are about to remove the veil. The veil. Father. Father. I will make the decree. You will watch it for two minutes. And then the gates will begin to open. Father, in the name of Jesus. Lift your hands toward heaven. In the name of Jesus. Father, as a priest. I bring your people into realms of encounters so that they begin to have experience of you. Experience. Experience. Let their eyes open. Let their ears open. Let the spirit realm become open to them. I command the heavens over them to open in the name of Jesus. Begin to speak in tongues now. La Branda Zuzia. Recopale Sudash. Liga Papash Kapash. Zebe Branda Tias. Rabos. Seligapo. Rabamanas. Maleka Zuzia. Palatias. Shabota. Let the spirit of the world is in this carpet. Let the gates open. In the spirit, the in the let your ears open, let your eyes open. I, I command you, come into a cabin. In the power of the spirit. Lord Jesus, 
Listen. The gift of the Spirit is about to rest. Father, stretch your hands. Touch them. Touch them. Let there be a release of the gift of the Spirit. Gift of prophecy. Gift of word of knowledge. Gift of healing. Gift of healing. Gift of healing. Gift of healing. Prophecy. Prophecy. Word of knowledge. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Discernment of spirits. Enter into realms of encounters. Gift of faith. Gift of faith. Rabba Bondes. Shaliga Baha. Shaparina Paratas. I shall just help them so that people are not injured. Be focused and be praying in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Commission people into the realm of power. 
Most of you, your families have been in bondage. You are the beast, but there will be no power in your vessel. There will be no power in your vessel. At the count of three, hey, Shata, Rakash, Bariata, Omer, Latoa, Zebani, Urina, Zabata, Zabata, Zabata. Some warfare angels have just entered here. Warrior angels, warrior angels, warrior angels, warrior angels, Shababash, 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 Rakota Sidia, Bela, 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 Yabobori, Abadia, Rwanda, Sata, Barakiroa, Zeta, Pataka, Rubone, Taba, Rubone, Taba, Shabada, Tua. Stretch your hands towards me now. Zele Kapati Asuna. Spiritual energy is a tangible substance. Le Kapati Atua.
baptism, elder sister. Most of you are about to receive a fresh baptism. A fresh baptism. Don't be distracted. Lift your hands toward heaven. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Feel them afresh. Feel them afresh. Hey. Just be calm for a minute. Be calm for a moment. Be calm. Be quiet for a minute. Hey. Hallelujah, 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 Mandates have been given to the church once again for the kings to be born, for the man to be born, for the king to be born. Ali, Ali, oh, Ali, 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 oh, Ali, Ali, oh, Ali. We are out of time. We are out of time. I want to give you a personal gift. Just stretch your hands in my direction. There are certain things we inherited. There are certain things we inherit. Uh, we'll, we'll do this one without sound. We'll do this one without sound. This one is for people that can catch it. For those who can lambano. It's not for everybody. There are things we inherited from God I want to give you. Some of us traveled many miles. We went through many heights in order to receive them. Oh my God. Lord, let the rivers flow. As many as can receive now, I open it. Let them access it, Lord. Let them access it, Lord. Take, 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 take. Drink of the waters. Ushers, be sensitive. I don't want people injured. Take. Let the rivers flow into your vessel. Such as you desire. Such as I have received of the fathers. I make available to you. Receive in the name of Jesus. Let it cover you like a canopy. Most of you be drenched in it. Be drowned in it. Let it flow like a river. Flow like a river. Flow like a river. Authority in the spirit. Authority in the spirit. Authority in the spirit. Authority in the spirit. Access to mysteries. Access to insight. Let the vault of revelation open to you. The gate of insight. I ask you to open. The gate of insight. Open. 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 Receive the patriarchal mantles that we received of the fathers. Open to you. Open to you. Open to you. Open to you. What we have with God that doesn't make any ground hard, we enter, we scatter it. Let it fall upon somebody now. A mantle of power. A mantle of power. A mantle of power. It falls on somebody. It falls. It falls. It falls. Jesus, I see somebody entering into a well of inspiration. A well, a well, a well flooded with inspiration. Flooded with inspiration. Take it. Jacaboria, Senatali, Zozula, Kabila, Paraskatash. Receive, receive, receive. Drink, drink, drink. It's a river. It flows, it flows. 
There's a river that makes cloud the city of God. It flows. It flows. It flows. It flows. Oh my latter. I hear my spirit. Somebody is just partnering with an angel. An angel. A prophetic intercessor. A prophetic intercessor. Zatakabilas. Rapapash. 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 Zetokabilas. Zondo Pratakiva. Lakuria Tatash. Oh, help them, ushers. Jegapaliga Pash. Blow like a mighty wind. Spirit of victory. Cover us with you. Blow, blow like a mighty wind. Spirit of victory.
Bible said the yoke shall be broken because of the anointing. Right now, under the anointing of the Spirit, I declare every yoke on your life, on your shoulders that have beset you in your walk with God and in your progress in life, I command them in the name of Jesus, be broken. He said the hand of God came upon Elijah and he outran the chariots of Ahab. It's a mystery of speed in the kingdom. I declare that under this auction, may the hand of God make for speed in your life in the name of Jesus. Go and run ahead of your pairs. Overtake horses, overtake chariots. It doesn't matter the years that the caterpillar worm have eaten. The years that the canker worm have eaten. The years that the palmer worms have eaten. All the wasted years of your life by the mystery of the anointing I bring them back into your life in the name of Jesus. He said Danny and his friends they were ten times better than their peers because of an excellent spirit that was at work in them. I declare right now in every endeavor of your life let there be the working of an excellent spirit in the name of Jesus. Receive Receive the spirit of excellence in the name of Jesus. Every mystery that we receive in Christ that is designed for our advantage, that is dormant in your life, I provoke it tonight. I demand, let there be an activation in the name of Jesus. Those of you that your beginning have been small, from this day forward, I declare enlargement over your life in the name of Jesus. Everyone that has been restrained by family altars, ancestral patterns, causes, and obstructions from their ancestry, at this point, I declare by the authority of the anointing that let all those chains, let all those utterances, let all those energies be nullified in the name of Jesus. Go and prosper. Go and subdue. Increase on every side. Rule in your world. Reign as kings forever. In the name of Jesus. And for everyone that have served in the course of this meeting, I declare that the Lord honor you. May the grace for honor come upon your life. Because you have served in the house of God men will serve you in the name of Jesus you will never be small everywhere you go to that you need favor to speak for you I command the voice of favor to begin to minister on your behalf in the name of Jesus I declare that you are never small you shall be ten times better than all your peers in Jesus name thank you father thank you lord give the lord a big shout of praise Somebody shout glory! Shout glory! You are God. You are not just. You are not just a joke. You are great God singing. You are God. atmosphere what a powerful atmosphere wow 
Can you just take your seat in one minute? Please don't go. We are rounding up already. Please don't go. We are rounding up already. Hallelujah. For everyone who is here for the first time, this is Auto of Revival. Auto of Revival is a, is a group. And we meet every Sunday by four. If you, if you feel led to be with us, to have to with us, please find that time to come around and you will enjoy yourself in the presence of God. I want to take this time to appreciate all my friends, brothers, those from far and near, God's servant and his friends, all the way from my God. I cannot just explain. Our <laughs> sister, our beloved sister, thank you so much for coming. Even with the whole stress, she could still make our time. I really appreciate you, man. And God's servant, we are really grateful, really grateful. Thank you so much for coming. Now, I want to say, that we'll be having more of God's servant as long as God give us grace. Eh? <laughs> we are taking permission now to be having him more. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you were blessed, please can you jam your hands together for Jesus. Such a blessing. He is such a blessing. A real dear. Such a blessing. Father, we thank you for tonight. I shall bring this meeting to a closure. All those that have gained mastery with you, all those that have gained hindsight, insight, foresight by this meeting, Lord, you will take us to a place where no man can take it away from us. In the name of Jesus. Just as you said unto Mary, you said, Matter, matter. There is something that is needful. He said, Mary has found it and it can never be taken from her. Such we decree today that that which has been given to us will not be taken away by ravens in the name of Jesus. No wheat beds in the spirit that has ability to take impartations will be able to take this one from us in the name of Jesus. We will not fall down and rise tomorrow and not see it again. This one, we will sustain it in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Now, when God's servant was ministering, I saw something like a ladder. I saw a ladder. And I saw that there was a kind of a blockade in the ladder. So I saw somebody climbing it. And then the person was being pulled down. Climbing, pulled down. And I was wondering what, what that, that was. And the Spirit of the Lord whispered to me, he said, this one has been marked for encounters. The ladder represents the journey of encounter. But anytime she's about to journey into it, as if a force comes to pull her off. But when God's servant was ministering, I saw that an angel of the Lord stretched a sword. And that sword brought down that enemy that used to pull her down. And I knew that there was a passageway, a freeway into the spirit realm. Glory to God. Glory to God. We are going to run this meeting up now. Please, just as I said, 4 p.m. on Sundays, out of River meets here. If you have good time, if you have time on your side, you can be with us for fellowship. Thank you and God bless you. Can we write? I hope you enjoyed this video and I believe that you were blessed. If um, you were blessed by this video, make sure that you click on the share button and share it to a friend. And also make sure that you like the video so that YouTube can recommend this video to other people so that they can also be blessed by the message. If you have any question, Please make sure that you contact us and we'll get back to you. And also, if you are watching this video and you don't know Jesus Christ, ask the Lord and personal Savior. I want you to make that decision. Just contact us in the description. Call us and let us lead you to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. And lastly, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on the, that notification bell icon. Turn it on so that when new videos are uploaded, you can be notified. Thank you so much and see you in our next video and prayer section. Bye.